What is up, you guys? Chef Billy Parisi here from BillyParisi.com, and I'm making an insanely delicious, authentic Italian chicken cacciatore recipe that's gonna have the whole family singing. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that I love doing up old school classic recipes, whether it's Italian or French. I just have so much passion for these types of foods. They're simple, they're classic in nature, and they're so delicious. And I have to be honest, I'm a little afraid that we're sort of losing the heritage of these recipes. You see a lot of folks nowadays claiming something is authentic and traditional and classic, and then it's not. These things take research. It's not just because I went to culinary school or logged 15 years of the restaurant industry, I know exactly what a chicken cacciatore is. I haven't made that recipe in years. I looked up everything, did some research, talked to people to find out what is the most authentic way to make chicken cacciatore. So my mission is, and always has been, whenever I'm doing recipes, to make sure they are in their most authentic state as possible. And I hope you dig that, because uh, don't go anywhere else, because right here, we're gonna make sure it's classic. Chicken cacciatore, or cacciatore anyways, translates from Italian to English as hunter. And that's more of a style of cuisine. A hunter style cuisine usually incorporates onions, a little bit of herbs and tomatoes, sometimes a few other things, but we're gonna stick with that because again, it's all about the classics. What I do have though are some mushrooms and specifically some porcini mushrooms. We need to reconstitute these because I've never seen them in the fresh form. They're usually dry. So what we wanna do is boil some water we're gonna add some porcini mushrooms to just a container of some sort and pour the boiling water all over the top. Make sure they are submerged. We're gonna let that sit for about 20 minutes. And then at that time, what you wanna do is finely strain it. You can use some cheesecloth or a chinois, which is a fine mesh strainer. Go ahead and strain it through. Now be sure to reserve that liquid. Do not throw it away. Take those mushrooms over to the sink. What I'm gonna do is sort of just give them an additional rinse, make sure they are really clean. And then what you wanna do is just using your hands, squeeze all the juice out of the mushrooms. We wanna make sure a little bit on the drier side, squeeze it out, add it to a nice little bowl. And now we're gonna go over to the cutting board and we are gonna fabricate a chicken. Now I've got a whole chicken and I love meat fabrication. If you wanna buy these chicken parts already broken up, you can just buy breasts or thighs or drums, whatever you want or a combination. I like to break things down. That's just the chef nature in me. So what we're gonna do is slice along that center breastbone of the chicken. Just keep slicing down until that wing bone is exposed. Cut right in between the bone, don't cut through it. And then just simply take a nice little slice through the skin, boom, you've got a chicken breast. And now for the thigh and the leg, a big part of doing this is simply slicing and exposing bones, the same exact thing. Slice down, pull up that thigh bone, you'll see it come right up, slice in between it, cut around the skin so you have a ton of skin to wrap around this meat. Do the same exact thing to the other side and now to break it down, just simply cut right around the drum and the thigh where they connect, expose the bone, pull it out, cut in between them, boom, that's done. And for the breast, do the same thing with the wing. I just simply expose the bone, cut through it, I keep the wing, I keep the breast, boom, set it onto a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. And what we wanna do here is season it very, very well with some sea salt, some cracked black pepper, make sure to do it on both sides. And then let's go over to a nice large Rondo pot. What we're gonna do is add some olive oil to this nice shallow pot. It's also called a Rondo, like you heard me call it. Put it on medium heat. We're gonna add in the chicken skin side down. We wanna caramelize this chicken up, get it brown. Don't worry about cooking it through. We just wanna have a nice golden brown on the chicken. But this is great timing because I have a few more things to prep up. Go back over to your cutting board. I've got some whole peeled tomatoes from a can. What I like to do is just get my hands right in there, roll up my sleeves and sort of squeeze the plum tomatoes to break them up. I don't know why I like doing this. I was taught this in culinary school. I just like it. I like the way the texture is. I like the way it tastes. Go ahead and set that to the side and remember those porcini mushrooms. What we wanna do is just roughly chop them, get them to about a small dice size, set that to the side, head back over to our Rondo pot. Let's give that chicken a flip. Absolutely gorgeous, bro. This looks amazing. You know this is gonna be so amazing. So flip it over. We're just gonna sear it for about four minutes on the other side. Like I said, brown up both sides. 
And then at that point, what you wanna do is remove the chicken from the rondo. We're gonna put it on a plate. And in that rondo, we are gonna add in some onions, some celery, carrots, some finely minced garlic. We're gonna add in about half the porcini mushrooms that we chopped up. Go ahead and save the other half for another recipe down the road. We're also going to add in some sliced portobello mushrooms, some sliced button mushrooms. Now go ahead and give this all a stir. We're gonna saute for about six to seven minutes. Once it does have a nice brown, it's gonna be a little steamy up in here. We're gonna deglaze with some Cabernet Sauvignon or another dry red wine if you have some on hand. We're gonna cook this until the liquid is almost gone or as the French say, au sec, almost gone. We're gonna add in some of that reserved porcini mushroom liquid that we strained. Remember I told you to hold on to it, don't throw it away. Next, go ahead and add in the squeezed whole peeled tomatoes. We're next going to add in some herbs, some chopped fresh parsley, some chopped fresh rosemary. We are going to season it very well with sea salt and pepper. Give it a little stir. Now we're gonna put the chicken right back into that liquid and we're gonna braise it. This is gonna help make it tender and completely flavor up this deliciousness. So put it in there, put the top on, simmer it on low heat for 30 minutes. We're gonna come back, try it out. Now to finish off chicken cacciatore, what I like to do is just add on a ton of finely minced parsley. You can also hit it with some crushed red pepper flakes if you'd like but me, I'm gonna avoid some of that spice and then we are done. You guys, this looks incredible. It smells amazing. It's so simple to do. There are a couple things you can serve this up with. As you can see, I did polenta. I've got a recipe on billyprecy.com. If you need a really easy recipe for that, you can also serve it up with rice or fresh pasta, totally up to you. Let's not waste any time. Let's try this out. Whoa. Oh my gosh, is that so good? Not wasting any more time. Come back next week. You know, we're going to hook up something delicious. See y'all later.